What's up, everyone? Welcome to this day in Philly sports history for January 1st, 2023. Happy New Year. Hope everyone had a great time and was safe last night. I was able to make it up, but I went to bed probably at 12.02. So, but I did make it up to see. So we got that going for us, which is nice. But I'll dress the elephant in the room really quick. What a shitty ending to Michigan season. And I know this is a Philly base podcast but i'm gonna tie it all together here in a minute hats off to tcu they just came out and were way more physical than what the wolverines i feel as though and wasn't in the coaching room in the practice rooms or whatever but it just felt that michigan underestimated what tcu was going to do to them and it, it was obvious they they were a lot more physical i think than anybody expected including me and you also can't make the mistakes. And I know TCU turned the ball over three times as well, but you can't turn the ball o- over three times and expect good things to happen. I also question the some of the play calling, um, and this is where we're going to tie it into Philly. Can we just retire the Philly special? I mean, I think it's worked maybe once or twice. Obviously, the best time was in the Super Bowl. But even when they were practicing, Doug Peterson said, the players said, they never got it right. So it's a difficult play. And look, I'm a proponent of trick plays. I feel as though there should be more fake punts and fake field goals in the NFL and college football. But you got to know that it's situational awareness. That was not a good situation to do a a fake or a, a trick play. You come down and you break off that long run and then you take in that touchdown, changes the whole tone and whole complexion of that game. And if you, I don't mind going for it there, but not the Philly special. Can we just retire it? Everyone, coaches, everyone, please, let's retire it. Let it ride off into the sunset as the greatest play in Super Bowl history, the greatest play in Philadelphia sports history. Let's let it go. Thank you. That's what. Thank you for coming to my TED Talk on the Philly special. But, again, shitty way to end the season for Michigan, but we move on. It's Philly Philly Day. Uh, quick Flyers update. They won 4-2 to two over the Kings last night, moving them up to 26 in the standings. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but I want to see more L's as we go into 23 and then win that ping pong lottery. Uh, Sixers looked good against the Thunder last night, 115-96. to 96. They were a little shorthanded, but Joe got the job done and – Basically, that's what they should have done against the team that they had. Um, Before we get into today's This Day in Philly Sports History, just a quick Eagles update and we'll do our pick. Jalen Hurts is out and I noticed it caused the line to crash to five and a half. Uh, They did read this morning that he could be available next week if they need him to be. I don't think they're going to need him to be. And the line down to five and a half, I think you're getting value. Uh, From what I saw, the highest I saw it was seven and a half. Most of the week I saw it at seven. So to me, that's a point and a half of value. We're, we're, We're six and nine on the picks this year. But I think this is, to me, reminding me a lot of that Giants game where I don't necessarily see a pathway for the Saints, who are just not a good team, to beat the Eagles. And if... Minshew did does what he did against Dallas. The Eagles win this going away. I think you're going to see him play better. The turnovers won't be there because he's got the, some of those jitters and everything out of his system. He's got a game under his belt with the full complement of the offense. Um, the offensive line's a little banged up, but again, the, it's the Saints. And again, I listen, I could sit here and eat my words tomorrow morning, and if that's the case, that's the case. I just don't necessarily see a way that the Saints even cover the spread, let alone win this game. I think we're going to be celebrating the number one seed and the division title later this afternoon. Good way to ring in the new year. So we're going to take the Eagles minus the five and a half. All right. So this day in Philly sports history, we're going to go all the way back to 1935. And, There was a point in time, and I I like the college football playoff. I like that they're expanding it. I I like that it gives more teams a chance and kind of settle it on the field, not necessarily a group of people in a room. Um, So the fact that they're expanding, I would love to see it expand to even 16 
28, 32 teams uh, and play throughout the month of December. And I know the the argument against that is the whole, well, they're student athletes. Yeah, but that went out the window with the whole NIL deals. So they're they're getting paid. So guess what? You want to take the 32 best teams in the country and do something similar to what they do in Division One AA or FC, whatever they are. I, I, I love it. So all that to say, there was a time when New Year's Day, especially in Philly, was about bowl games and watching the Mummers parade. And because of the playoffs, some of the lack, the luster on those bowl games kind of went away. But last night, uh, the Sugar Bowl happened, and it, it's one of the premier bowl games that is out there. It's actually one of the... Uh, oldest along with the second oldest along with the Rose Bowl or the Rose Bowl is the oldest the Sun Bowl the Orange Bowl are the two um, that are tied with uh, the Sugar Bowl but on this day back in 1935 it was the first ever Sugar Bowl and the Philly connection is that the Temple Owls were one of the first participants in the Sugar Bowl Back in 1935, they went 7-0-2, so the Sugar Bowl committee picked them as their one of the representatives. And they took on Tulane, which, ironically enough, it was a home game for Tulane. They played at the old Tulane Stadium. Um, And even more ironic is they are uh, conference mates now. Both Tulane and Temple play in the AAC. But Temple jumped out to a 14-0 lead. They were up 14 to 7 at halftime and um, ended up losing the game 20 to 14. As I was doing the research on this, apparently, speaking of trick plays, Tulane, right before halftime, pulled a Music City miracle where they had their quarterback returning the kick. And I guess he ran and pulled a Frank Wycheck, threw it across the field. Tulane scored a touchdown and it completely changed the whole momentum of the game. Um, But on this day, January 1st, back in 1935, the Temple Owls and the Tulane Green Wave played in the first ever Sugar Bowl. Now, this year, the Sugar Bowl was Alabama, who just completely dominated uh, K-State. But still going on, second oldest, along with the Sun and Orange Bowls. But now with the playoffs, it's going to change a little bit. But Temple has a little piece of that history back when New Year's Day bowl games were something that you played for. Uh, I do think the playoffs are going to be a good thing, though. Hopefully, my Wolverines will be back. Uh, ordinarily, with a team like this, with how they're they're made up, I would say, yeah, they'll be back. But with the whole transfer portal, I mean, you, we won't know until probably July who, who's good and who's not. But Happy New Year. I wish everyone the best. Make some good resolutions. We got the Flyers, who we want to continue to to be in the hunt for that top three pick. Hopefully, they they get lucky and win it. We want to see the Sixers put it together, go on a nice little run. Phillies look good on paper. We want to see them actually transfer that out to the field. And Cassianos to come back strong. And then all of a sudden, you get Bryce coming back almost as a, a trade deadline pickup. And then, of course, we want the Eagles to win today and then carry that over and bring home a second Super Bowl. So, Happy New Year. Go have yourselves a New Year's Day. Make sure you eat your pork for good luck. And until next time, I'll see you when I see you.